Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days. But today's second video, day 10, will take us to the 18th of July. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the XN GFS and ECM Ensemble because we're going to surround uh, a couple of weeks. Have a look at Surface V2 for August at the end of the video. And I shall get on that for you in a moment to say it the first video today was Jeremy Friday. So please check out that video if you'd like to do that. Please like, share, subscribe on the video. Thank you so, so, funny. Do that. so sorry about the absence yesterday. I had a bit of an off day. Just a little bit poorly with the tummy. Um, so I had a little bit of a rest and, uh, you know, recharge the batteries slightly uh, yesterday. And uh, we're getting the video back now. So it's just a one-off uh, weekend. Everything should be back to normal. But so sorry about that, everyone. Right, we're going to start off with GFS, upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. For next couple of weeks, so uh, we're looking at London today. Red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average all alone, starting off a little bit above average at the moment, uh, not too far from average. So, uh, over the weekend into the open part of next week, though, it will become quite hot. Uh, around Monday, Tuesday, actually, we see the upper air temperature going up to around 15 degrees at 815 HPA, about probably the temperature into below 30 Celsius. A little bit of a drop in the temperature then around the middle part of next week, and then the temperatures uh, lifting up again as we go from the 16th, 17th of uh, July onwards until we get into the last week of the month, we have a little bit of a cooling trend. You'll notice there are still some very, very hot uh, GFS ensemble members. These ones up here are bringing in uh, extreme heat. I think the GFS ensembles have backed off a little bit, though, um, from the uh, amount of ensemble members that were going very hot like a couple of days ago, we did the last 10 to 40 days. I think there's been a little bit of a backtrack on that. Nevertheless, it looks like it will either be very warm or hot uh, through the middle part of July, and we can't completely discount the chance of some very hot weather. Precipitation wise, there'll be lots and lots of dry conditions over the next uh, week, 10 days, too. Perhaps a little bit more unsettled as we go into the extent. Let's have a look at the ECM ensemble. No, we want to go there and then there. Uh, and then there. Right, so this is how the ECM uh, ensembles are looking in terms of the upper air temperatures at 6Z suite. Right, so uh, this is the 12Z uh, suite. And um, these are, we have got more hot ensemble members here than we've got with the GFS. So uh, look at all these that are going to between 20 and 25 degrees at 800. And 50 HPA, a lot of those ensemble members actually are uh, are doing that. Uh, the ensemble means is a white line down here, so by no means all of them are going that hot. But, you know, from around, again, 16th uh, to the 19th or 20th of July, this window just here, uh, we might pull up some very extreme heat, which is going to wait and see. But if we do start getting the... Uh, Upper air temperatures within that boundary of 20 to 25 degrees, um, you know, then we are probably talking about extreme heat. We just got to wait and see where this is going. I'd say, I think the GFS ensembles have backed off from that a little bit, but the ECM ensembles are still, you know, going for that. Right, temperature anomalies from the 8 to, I'm so sorry, everybody, from the 8 to 16th of July above average. Precipitation anomalies from the 8 to 16th of July drier than average, so it's going to be a warmer, dry week to come. Ladies and on that from Earth, no school. Dark next shows that high pressure is dominating weather with low pressure areas and jet stream are pushed off up to the north now uh, with the Azores high ridging in from the Atlantic into northern and western parts of Europe. Okay, so this is how the important chart data is looking. This is how the UK Met vessel looks at midnight on Monday under an area of high pressure. High pressure dominates weather into uh, Tuesday as well. That will bring very warm or hot conditions with it through the early part next week. But a little bit cooler as the wind turns into the northwest through the middle part of next week. It's midnight Thursday. There's a cold front driving south with turning wind into the northwest, bringing some cooler and fresher air. A better ridge of high pressure building back in from off the Atlantic, re establishing itself, bringing a fair amount of uh, dry weather. Whether it would turn hot beyond that, you know, can't say as far as we go with the UK Met Euro. Right, this is our icon is looking again with high pressure dominating the weather over the weekend into the next week. It looks hot, particularly myself, early next week. Then that high pressure sticks around the country, maybe for a while, being some slightly cooler air for the middle part of the week. Then at the end of next week, that high pressure begins to slip a little bit further eastwards, starting to pull in 
into the south. I kind of look poised to turn very hard, I think, through the weekend of the 16th, 17th of July. Uh, so there's the upper air temperatures. That's how they're looking midday on Friday. See if it's a very extreme heat just to our south and southwest. If you go on another 24 hours, I suspect we'll start pulling that up from France, actually. So Icon is poised to unleash a very hot weekend for the 16th and the 17th of July, I think. GFS Midlight Run looks like that again. High pressure dominates well through the early part of next week. will be very warm, but be hot down in the south too. Uh, middle of next week turns cooler. We've been going into the northwest. Uh, so that's in live UK met. And then the high pressure risk savages over the country through the end of next week brings a return of very warm or quite hot weather. Uh, there's the other air temperatures again by Saturday 16th looking really poised to bring up some extreme heat plus 20 cells. Ice front is there just off the south coast, but it doesn't quite make it actually on the midnight run. And actually we turn the wind into more of an Atlantic based uh, flow. So the extreme heat is kept at bay uh, by the GFS midnight run. It's a close run thing, but the, the extreme heat sort of pushed off over towards the eastern side uh, of Europe. And then in the extreme range with uh, the GFS midnight run starts to get a fungy look about it with there's low pressure, probably being heavy shower paint photosorms down into the south and probably turning a bit cooler as well with winds pulling into the north. GFS 6Z looks like that again. High pressure is in control of the weather through the uh, open part of next week. will be very warm, blowing hot down in the south. Um, that high pressure sticking around through the rest of next week. What am I doing? High pressure sticking around through the rest of next week. It's just pulling something a little bit cooler around the middle part of the week again from the north and from the northwest where the high pressure reestablishes, although not pulling up that extreme heat from the south. There's the upper air temperature Saturday, 16th of July, looking nowhere near as hot as some of the moral output does for that point. So the GFS definitely backed away from that extreme heat over, over the weekend of 16th, 17th of July. By day 10, we're going into a much cooler sort of northwesterly type flow and rather showery and windy up in the north. Then at the range, it turns increasingly unsettled and wet through uh, the second half of July with uh, low pressure bringing outbreaks of rain and pretty cool temperatures as well. Yeah, if you enjoyed the video, by the way, then please can you like, share, subscribe. We're back after having the day off yesterday. Please like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. GM, again, the high pressure dominating the weather through the early part of next week. We'll have a lot of hot air in the south, I think, with temperatures into below 30 Celsius early next week. And then uh, for the second half of next week, that's when uh, we start to pull up some very hot air from the south with the, uh, with the GM. Look at those upper air temperatures, much, much hotter by day 10, 18th of July, much hotter uh, than the GFS in particular. Uh, so we have got plus 20 Celsius ice over there covering England and Wales. The GM turns it very hot, only temporarily, but very hot with the GM around day 9 and 10. Wow, wow, wow. And then the East... Yeah, I'm so sorry. Well, the East FWF yeah, looks like that high pressure again is in control of the weather through the early part of next week. It will be hot, particularly so down in the south. And then the second half of next week, up to day 10, going happy to have high pressure over country. And very gradually, that heat begins to start trickling its way northward. So, very similar to ICON, probably, by the time we get through to day 10, 18th of July, we are poised with the ECM to bring up the plus 20 Celsius iceberg to turn extremely hot. So it all, it's all to play for, really, this. It's all to be revealed. There is still a huge amount of, cert of uncertainty whether sometime around, say, the 16th to the 20th of July, that sort of window, whether we could turn extremely hot or not. There is the chance we might do... Um, but we just got to wait and see. Just got to wait and see where this is going. There's still a lot of uncertainty. Precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from threadshow.com. Mainly dry at 10 days down in the south, really. We'll be a little bit more showery for a while up in the north and the northwest. But what Raymond is, is primarily for more northern and western areas. This is the option on the table within the ECM ensemble today. No, it's not that June. So this is going to be the right one. Okay. Uh, this is, I'm sorry about that. Uh, this is the, <laughs> this is the option, these are the options on the table, um, within the ECM ensemble today, uh, for day 10, which gets us to the 18th of July, 
28 members of the ECL zone, including the control and the operation run, have high pressures just to ourselves and would be starting to at least try to put some very hot air uh, from the south with low pressure up to the north. Then 23 just here, a little bit flatter and consequently a little bit cooler, with wind just in from something of a westerly type uh, direction. Now, as we run on to Timmy time, which gets us to the 23rd of July, 51. Out of physical members of the ECM songs, all of them take high pressure further away from us, out into the North Atlantic, lower pressures away to the northwest. Winds coming in from west northwest direction. That looks a little bit cooler and a little bit more showery, especially so for the north. Well, lastly, CFSB2, these are 700 millibar height anomalies for uh, for August, or this is for 700 millibar height anomaly for August. Um, and today, quite anticyclonic, building high pressure in from the Atlantic into northern Europe, so that will be a mostly dry and potentially very warm August. We'll look at the temperature anomaly for August there, above average, we've got red colours showing up, so that is a proper hot sort of signal for August and a little bit on the drier than average side too. Could we get hot and dry August? Remember, we have not had an 18 Celsius CT August since 2003. Got very close to it in 2020, but the final week of month ran it down. But could it happen? Could it happen? Let me know in the comments what you think, everyone. Okay, we're done. So if you enjoyed the video, then please can you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Don't forget to tell your friends and family about Gaz Rover to get them to subscribe too. If everyone who subs brings a friend, we will get to 14,000 subscribers so much more quickly. We've got to put on around 150 subscribers now to get to 14k. So, uh, thank you so much, everyone, for all the support. And please, you know, uh, sub, sub, sub. Thank you so much. Right, well, we're done with today's videos then. Tomorrow, we will be back at 6 a.m. forecast tomorrow. We'll have a week ahead forecast. We'll have the ECMWF 42 day slash 6 week forecast. And if all that wasn't enough, there'll be a 10 14 day or two. So, keep checking back to the channel for more. But for today's videos and this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.